He does it again. Paul Craig gets the submission win. Triangle choke as an underdog. Coming back in a fight that he's losing. He keeps doing it. I don't know how this is happening. But every time he's a massive underdog, he's always able to get that triangle choke in there. Happened to Magomed Ankalaev. Happened to Jamal Hill. Happened to Kennedy Neschukwu. And he got the armbar in Henrik De Silva. If Paul Craig's an underdog, you know to put money on him. He is always going to find that triangle, no matter how the fight is going down. I was very shocked to see that this fight was going down exactly like I predicted it was going to go. Sometimes you look at the skills, and that doesn't tell you the whole story. You have to also look at the bare bones difference between two fighters. Nikita Kry Krylov, as we all know, and we can still agree after the fight, Nikita Krylov is the more skilled fighter. He has more techniques, more skills than Paul Craig does, of course, but that doesn't necessarily make you win a fight because it comes down to efficiency, effectiveness, and fight IQ in the cage. The main difference between the two fighters are Nikita Krylov is a fighter who is known for years to fail on opportunities given to him. Whenever there's a moment that can happen in the fight, he fails on executing it and oftentimes loses fights specifically through submission. Most of his losses are by submission. So we have a man who fails on the opportunities versus a master of succeeding in opportunities. Paul Craig has made a name for himself on capitalizing on any opportunity given to him. When he submitted Magomed Uncle Live with one second left in a fight that he was getting dominated in, it showed to everybody. You give him an opening and he will finish you off no matter how good you are. Magomed Uncle Live is one of the best fighters in this division. He is a potential title contender in his next fight. And as good as that guy is, as well-rounded as he is, Paul Craig was able to find that chink in the armor and make it work. People fight in his guard way too much and it was weird to hear the commentators say that Craig has to make something else happen. He cannot just be content on fighting off his back. That's how he wins every fight. That's his thing. Not a lot of people are going to be able to handle his guard. So when you have two guys like that, someone who's not good at making decisions in the octagon and fails on his opportunities versus someone who makes good decisions in the octagon and succeeds in his opportunities, regardless of the skill set, that alone could show to you who would win the fight. And you saw it here as well. It did not start when that triangle choke went in. It did not start because Nikita Krylov was throwing punches and got caught into it. It happened right in the beginning. Why did Krylov take him down? Krylov came out in the fight throwing a push kick, getting it caught, which showed you how fast Craig is and catching strikes happened right in the triangle choke as well, he caught that back fist. Paul Craig has extremely quick reflexes. He was able to get Krylov to trip out to the mat, but he did not necessarily get control. Krylov was able to show his wrestling technique and rotate into that double leg takedown. He should never have gone for the double leg takedown, and if he would, try to create some separation and get away from Paul Craig, because he ultimately went into what Paul Craig said, his world. And Krylov was conquesting there. He was winning the battles over and over again, but ultimately lost the war. Landing huge ground and pound shots, but never made an attempt to get away. Even when Paul Craig was throwing the butterfly hooks and elevating the position, this is a clear opportunity for Krylov to get away. He wanted to just land more punches. He wanted to get on top of Paul Craig. And it might have been a false sense of opportunity here, because Craig also said on the mic that he wanted Krylov to throw punches at him. It can create that confidence. It can create that urge to finish the fight and when that happens every time you throw ground upon shots you are exposing yourself to something and at times it looked pretty bad i mean it looked like krillov was hurting paul craig so that created even more confidence and more of an urge for krillov to finish off the fight and continuously land these punches it even looked like paul craig at one moment was out of there it looked like it though doesn't mean it actually was because Paul Craig said when he was getting hit in the face that he was trying to lure in some punches so Nikita Krylov could expose himself for that triangle. It seems pretty crazy and at first I didn't really believe it but when you look back at Paul Craig and the punches are landing on him, if he was actually that rocked, he would not be able to move his head from the punches. He was rolling with shots even after getting hit clean and guys who are rocked don't necessarily do it like that. You have to have some kind of awareness in order to roll with punches like that. So perhaps he wasn't actually as rocked as we thought he was and he was actually hoping that Krylov would throw more attacks more strikes so he can open himself up the triangle comes in and that's exactly what happened at the end of the fight Krylov lands a back fist at Craig and at the same time while it lands on Craig Craig was able to grab a hold of it he literally caught the back fist as it was going through and used that as well as the weight that Krylov was putting on top of Paul Craig because he was stacking heavy on him when you stack heavy you're putting a lot of weight on top of your opponent so he's gonna fall on top of Paul Craig because of that right well when Craig catches the back fist and he knows that Krylov is going to lean in. He snatches on one of the fastest triangle chokes I've ever seen in the light heavyweight division. It might be safe to assume that Paul Craig has the fastest triangles, probably the best triangle choke submission 
in light heavyweight history. The man is always able to find a way to win. He's a man of the opportunity. Whenever it presents itself, he always capitalizes and succeeds, and that's the difference between him and Nikita Krylov. After this win, and the win streak he's been on, I mean, he hasn't lost in two and a half years, so far on a six undefeated streak, he has to be in the top seven for sure. And a fight with Anthony Smith is something I would love to see from next. If they can do it in Glasgow, Scotland, they will blow the roof off of this place because we have never seen a Scottish fighter in the UFC like Paul Craig before. He's an absolute warrior in that cage. 